don't need bigger knife. Play with his balls. The screen was still black when you started to say that, so. <laughs> Excellent. We are back from our quick little break here. Um, as you can see there, I busied myself playing with my balls. <laughs> Gotta keep yourself entertained while you're uh, we're on exactly. break. Exactly. So what yeah. were you saying there, Dennis? About things and stuff? Well, oh, let's finish the other question, and then we'll get into that. We had, uh, okay. had a bunch of responses to that question, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about six. Okay. But I can consolidate a few of them. Yeah, I mean, if they're similar enough, may as well. Yeah. Um, the next person that uh, answered... I, I'll go back and just say what... I guess if you're watching this later, you know what question it is. What knife have you bought that even though it, even though it had features that you didn't like? Are usually avoid is more accurate. Um, the next person that answered was um, Everyday Caleb. Um, actually, it was Everyday Caleb, and it was uh, it was Nigel. Um, both of you have an M4 bailout. Yep. Um, and Caleb was saying that he is not usually a fan of Tantos, but loves that knife. Yeah, and I'm in the same boat, not usually a fan of the Tantos, and it is a little on the edge of the tactical sort of side of things for me. But once I put it in my hand, it was just like, yeah, no, I, I'm buying this knife. It's not the wrong answer. I'm super excited for when mine shows up. Mm -hmm. Um... On to the next question, or next answer, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Here in situ responded, um, he actually had a few responses. He's kind of cheating the system here a little bit. He's um, but I was going to say, hang on a sec, Paul. I, I didn't actually answer uh, on the last question either. Yeah, oh, we haven't gotten oh, no, We're still doing the answers of it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Continue on. Yep. Um, he was saying four things that he usually avoids. Um, one was a backlock, or if it was heavy, and he's got a Buck 110 and the Alox Hunter, um, which are both apparently, I mean, I know for sure the, the Buck 110 is heavy as hell. Yeah. Um, and then he was saying slow deployment, the deploy, deployment, deployment. Um, <laughs> is, uh, I don't know. There would stack. take two on that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, slow deployment, the sketch, which sounds like a CRKT design. It it has that kind of ring to it. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was saying the second lock, which the M16 has, and was the did the folding. Rezel have a, uh, a secondary lock as well? It, at least one model did, but it wasn't the auto locks like the M16 oh, yeah. and M21s are. It was a manual locks for the secondary. <coughs> Which is a thousand times better. Yeah. Now, they j did just recently release a mini Rezel, so they might have put the auto lock on the newest version. I'm mm -hmm. not 100% sure on that, but yeah. Hmm. That's fair. Um... Mr. Fisk jumps in um, saying Spydercos. And I know he's got a Gale Bradley or has had it in the past. I don't know if he currently has one. Um, but definitely some of the Spydercos kind of get past that barrier for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you were mentioning when we were talking about Blaine and the smock and Spydercos can be polarizing. It's very little middle ground for the enjoyment of them. Yeah. Very true. What are you talking about? What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Justin would like to know if he's the only person on the planet that who doesn't actually hate the auto lock system. And the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. It's a very high potential. <laughs> yeah. 
You and I want to say Kit Carson designed it, so he might yeah. like it a little bit as well. But I mean, he's not with us anymore. So yes, now you are <laughs> like it's dark. That got dark as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Also, then, uh, just super quick caveat before we jump too far away from this, the lock system I thought was made by uh, by uh, Michael Walker and I forgot the name, but Lake. Ron um, Lake. Ron Lake. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what the L and the yeah yeah, yeah I think it, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think L A W K S. It got. I'm just checking their website to make sure, but I do know that the. Uh, the M16s, the M21s, they definitely helped popularize it. Yeah. Um, the Lake and well, Walker lock is, yeah. actually makes sense for, yeah. Yeah, and if Kit Carson Popular didn't lines. actually design it, he at least liked it enough to allow it in his design, so. Yes. That is his point, still stands. Well, yeah. kind of. <laughs> I don't know less. how Michael Walker and Ron Lake feel about their own lock, too, so maybe, you know. Maybe they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they're like that was a terrible idea. Oh. We, we made so much money off of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is strange. Um, just on their website, they call it the locking liner safety and the automated liner safety. They don't call it auto locks or locks on their on their own website anymore. They used to. Yeah, they, they totally I, used to. That's catalogs that has that in it. I know, but they just call it yeah. the locking liner safety here. Weird. Maybe they kept the rights to use it, but lost the rights to call it the auto locks. Maybe after Cold Maybe? Steel sued them, they were like, whoa, y- mm. we're pulling back. They got <laughs> yeah. So they just completely distanced themselves from it. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Yeah. I learned something new today. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. Um, and our last uh, comment here on that question was from EDC Lovers Pakistan. And uh, he's talking about the Gerber Covert, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. I'm sure Dennis does. Because <laughs> certainly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dagger. Gerber and Applegate. Yep. If it's the FAST covert, it's assisted. If it's not the F-A-S-T, because that's an acronym for something, because Gerber was awfully clever about it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yes, the co- the covert actually wasn't the worst uh, Gerber knife out there by any means. That is fair. Yeah. Um, and on that note... I'm going to talk about it really quickly. As much as I like this knife, this knife has a lot of things that I don't normally like in a knife. Yeah, yeah. It's got a coated blade. It's recurved. And it's an assist. Um, (laughs) You're forgetting the most important thing. What's that? It's right hand only. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst feature out of all of the things that you listed there. It is. I'm it's right it, so I buying... don't care about your your uh, wrongness. <laughs> it stopped me from buying a board for seven thing. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but this has all of the trademarks of things that I don't normally like, but together in this package, it's pretty great. Yep. Well, and on the note of things that you don't like, and because I snarked about the Kershaw already, the last two major knives that I've purchased, uh, right hand only clips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I've I've gotten over that enough because I've liked the design enough that I'll just carry two knives, which means I need one in my right pocket now too. So that is fair. Uh these three knives all have something in common other than having black handles. Uh, they're using 8CR 13 or 14 <laughs> MOV blades. But I like the design so much, I'm looking the other way on the steel. But normally, if you ha- are using that steel, you generally lose all interest for me. It's just... I, I can't carry and use that knife. That is fair. Yeah, yeah no, I don't blame you. Not one bit. <laughs> And honest, um, honestly, I'm 
that was the one thing out of like the collection that I have. Like, what do I dislike the most about my knives? That was the thing that came up. I was like, yeah, that steel choice is just crap. <laughs> That's it. Justin saying in chat that he he might have to pick up one of those blurs. Um, the only suggestion I can make is do it quick. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's this. Um, that is the end of that question, Dennis. You were you had a thing that you were talking about on during our break. Mm -hmm. I, I did. I did have a thing that I was talking about. Um, so I mentioned just in brief passing on our break that I had found out that Benchmade now has um, pocket clips in their accessory section um, on their website to order. And I don't know what, like eight bucks or 10 bucks or something like that, US or whatever, which also opens up the question of are they now free under replacement warranty or have they gone the path of Spider Co. where you're now paying for a replacement clip? Mm -hmm. At least, yeah. if that's the case, at least you can order it through the Benchmade website. Uh, you can't do that with Spider Co. replacement parts, to my knowledge. You have to call their outlet store directly in order to purchase replacement clips. The last I checked. That's... Yeah, it's pretty That's stupid. Hypocrisy. Yeah. I'm going to fact check myself here while we talk about that, but the last I heard, that's what you had to do. <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm very curious on mm. whether I can get free pocket clips from Benchmade still or not. Yeah. I mean, okay. either way, I'll order them if I need them, and I actually do kind of need a couple. And I really... Yeah. Like, it wasn't that long ago that there was talk in the knife world about the fact that Benchmade was going to start charging for them. But I thought Benchmade was still of the opinion that, you know, if you've bought a Benchmade knife, you can get a free clip for that knife one a year. But if you need more they than said, that, They said some sort of weird announcement about a one a year that they were doing um, per knife or whatever type of thing, right? Yeah. So. I don't know if that's changed because that was prior to me noticing that they were up on their website. Right. But they also have cool things like with the mini bug out clip, you can get the black one, but you can also get a stonewashed one. Nice. That's a, a bug out clip that's stonewashed, which I think is, is kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. For a certain eyes, I think that would look super slick. Right. So I've got a uh, mini super freak coming my way here in the not too uh, <laughs> far off future here and How debating many... which bug out clip I'm going to put on it because the dick clip's not staying. That's for damn no. sure. So. Warren Osborne is rolling in his grave that you're calling it the <laughs> dick clip. <laughs> but you know what? He's wrong and you're right. It's a dick clip. <laughs> yep. It's a wang. I'm pretty sure me and Warren Osborne are tight, man. It's uh, <laughs> we, I got enough of his knives that I can say whatever the fuck I want to. But yeah. Um. <laughs> the question I have is how many people do you think will go to the Benchmade website, see them for sale for eight bucks and just buy them without even thinking about sending an email and just, this is easier done. Yeah. To be honest with you. Now that they're in the catalog, I bet you customers will come in and do that exact same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you order them for me? I don't care what they cost. I'd rather you just do it for me and I can bring them in and I don't have to worry about it. Take that, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, or even having them on hand. Because if they're available to order, maybe we'll just have some aftermarket clips on hand that you can just buy right in the store. And I mean, they're, done with it. they are standardized enough that, you know, they're good. one is going to fit most models. So... Should be good to go You're on that. Standardized front. enough. <laughs> Almost. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> so as far as Spider Co is concerned for replacement clips, uh, their attitude is summed up as follows: When Spider Co knives are used and carried properly, their pocket clips will last as long as the knives themselves. Uh, then they say, to ensure we can provide you accurate information on a replacement clip, we must know the specific model. Please email a picture of your knife to spider or sfo at spiderco.com. Uh, yeah, no, they will only sell them to you through the Spiderco factory outlet. And on their website, at least, there's no way to just select a clip and buy it. Mm -hmm. hmm. 
Interesting. Part Interesting. Of, part of that could be that they have factories in so many different places using clips with varying degrees of complexity. Maybe they just don't want to keep a bunch of Japanese clips on hand and a bunch of Taiwanese ones and wire clips and the th the few 3D machined ones and the weird ones that like on the uh... shoot I'm drawing a blank now the name you had it up didn't the subvert no that one had a different clip anyway it, maybe it's just not worth the hassle this one's just got a weird like oh yeah cut. yeah like the pad is strange the screw alignment on it is very strange uh, yeah yeah it's not a pm2 alignment by any means yeah the spoon clip or whatever yeah 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 so if you have a spider cone you want a replacement clip <laughs> <laughs> justin is saying in chat here that uh apparently the deep carry benchmade clips fit rat ones which would be super appealing for some folk if you decided to stock those clips. Gee, I wonder so, uh, who those some folk might be. <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying that now that it's a possibility, we might look into that because that's cool. And mm -hmm. and if Benchmade's actually willing to sell them to retailers and have them sitting on the shelves, then I'm, I mean, the more the merrier. If they're selling clips, let them sell clips, no matter if they're going on Ontario's or Spydercos or Cold Steel's or... 100%. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, I don't think. They're still selling clips at the end of the day. So. Yeah. yeah. It's better than giving away dozens of them at a time for free. <laughs> shh. Shh. <laughs> I was getting a lot of clips for a long time. It's it your totally, fault. <laughs> I was exploiting the hell out of that system. <laughs> Until everyone else started to do the same thing. It's like when Nigel I'm gonna and I have to recall Nig I'm going to have to recall Nigel's Crooked River Deep Carry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's like when Nigel and I started riding those scooters up a so far north of the city that they stopped letting everyone do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, though, I wonder if, like, if you sent an email to Benjamin and said, hey, can I get one of those bug out clips for my whatever other model that has that standard bolt pattern? I wonder if in that case, they'd be like, head on over to the Benchmade website and you can order it right there. Probably. Um, yeah. But if I, don't think they're, I don't think they're going to get that many emails about that. I think most knife guys that realize that the whole pattern is the same are probably going to be suave enough to play the game that... <laughs> They'll either ask for it from some knife, Osborne, whatever that they do have, or they'll just order it themselves directly from the. That's but fine. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because I know that the the bug out clips were getting popular with people for a while there. Mm -hmm. You seem to be pretty often on Instagram, you'd see people like, yeah, Benchmade hooked me up, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So that might be. It might not be. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, quick drink so I can stop talking. <laughs> so how's about that, that next question there? I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> a little or a lot? Not as much, not as, much as I hate right-hand pocket clips, Paul. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> if you were to design a knife... Which production company would you want to produce it? And uh, we're going to start off the bat here with Kiefer, who's been in chat with us tonight. Um, he said he'd like Medford to produce his knife. Oh, geez. He's, yeah, a little bougie over here. So yeah. three quarters of an inch thick? Is that what we're working yeah, with? Gonna here say, on the stock? That's going to say, it's not uh, quite bougie. <laughs> that's bougie with a hint of something else. That's uh... a. <laughs> Definitely gives me an, an immediate idea as to what you want to design. So, yeah. You're, yeah. Make, you're making a statement regardless. Don't get me wrong. I applaud pocket hatchets as much as the next guy, but it's, it's, <laughs> that was a trend we were talking about in the first episode, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So now after you've, your guys are done slagging on them. No, um, no. I mean – well made holy crap bomb proof yeah. like 
Yeah, I've only handled a few Medfords, but the ones that I've handled have been in pretty decent uh, fit and finish. And actually, we I, I just held the Marauder the other day, and actually, like, yeah, it was still a little bit thick for a pocket knife because it's it's a Medford. But, I mean, yeah, you got to like what he's doing with his knives and well-made, like, super smooth on the action, for sure. No doubt. And on that note, <laughs> um, this guy... Every time I try and read this guy's name, it, it hurts my brain. It's uh, S M R K E C S M R K. Um, he said he wants two sons to make his his design. Um, that's only so he can sell it for eighty dollars when it's got S ninety V. So I see. I see. You've also been looking at those slip joints. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I was going to suggest that he was going to try and rip off somebody else's design, but um, no, that's Blonzo. Two sons, pretty good so far. Yeah, they just got sketchy business practices, so you can't find them in any reputable stores. But you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's also my personal theory about it. That may or may not be fact. That's fair. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I will say is that I definitely have seen the two sons that he has, and he's got a bunch of them. Um, but he always really likes when Joe puts up his, uh, or when we, when I put up a picture of Joe's two son Tonto. I don't know how this is a, you know, distinction of Tonto. But... It, it's a very square, weird Tonto. It's way over there, with a very curvy handle. Yeah, it's a weird knife. I like it. Indeed. Are they going? Hmm? Sorry? Are things going? They froze up for a second there and the stream buffered a bit. Oh. Oh. Strange. Yeah, everything's going okay. I heard everybody. Cool. So that Are may we still ha- there, guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that may have been on YouTube's end. Yeah, it says we're going. Okay, I'm just going to trust that everything's things okay. Things are going. <laughs> <laughs> Might have just been me. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, this one's an odd one. What's his name? L- Lurie Fox one uh, says hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, hi. Oh. <laughs> uh. I am unfamiliar with this knife company. Hello. <laughs> Hello, knives. Right, right. I think he's onto something there. I think that's every greeting from a Damascus knife seller ever. <laughs> Hello, knives. <laughs> Hello, with the wavy head. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I've gotten high sometimes. A little more informal. Hello, friend. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yep. Indeed. Um... I, I think this is won't come as a surprise to anybody that Mr. Fisk wants Chris Reeves to uh, produce yep. his knives. I was going to well, say, I, he only makes his own designs, but then I don't actually know if that's true. I don't that's know. It's not true. Yeah. It's not true. See, that's why I didn't say it. <laughs> Good, job. Good job for not saying this. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's got a knife called the Green Beret, and it's designed by Bill Harsey because it has his name stamped right on it. Hmm. So, you know, there's those things. <laughs> there you go. Indeed. <laughs> um, I'm assuming Mr. Fisk was, is taking the opportunity there, though, um, specifically to make them make the 21 again. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's... Uh, like, okay, I've got this. I've got this way out there concept here, guys. <laughs> it's going back to a better design. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna take guy. your thirty-one, but what you're gonna do with it here? You see, <laughs> get rid of the weird only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We've got some uh, Damascus sellers in our chat right now. Uh-oh. Mr. Fist and Gray Man Outdoors are both. Hello, do you like knives? <laughs> Hello, Hello, my friend. friend. <laughs> Would you like to buy some maps? If anybody messages me directly, 
and asks me if I like knives, I'm going to block them. <laughs> it's just nope. So I had a guy recently with a whole bunch of stuff that he had reposted from other people's accounts, but one of the people that he um, reposted was Toronto blacksmith, which makes some beautiful axe axes if you yeah. haven't seen his stuff. Right. Um, yeah, Paul Krizozinski or something like that. But yeah, yeah, he makes some sweet stuff. <laughs> And they had his axes posted and I recognized him. So I played along with, you make beautiful axes. Oh my goodness. They're just like Toronto blacksmiths. I can't believe that. Like it's, yeah. And I toyed along with them for a while. So part of going. why it was easy to recognize that it was his axe is the picture that they had reposted clearly displayed the logo of Tr Toronto blacksmiths stamped on the side of the axe. <laughs> yeah, he's he's put on the watermarks of on his pictures. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. Mister Fisk is taking the opportunity right now to uh, message Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he also mentioned that the Impida, Impinda, Impinda, the slip joint one. Mm. Um, is that heresy design as well? Oh, okay, oh, cool. Yeah, and I think I knew that as well. And so is one of the little professional soldiers, the little skeletonized fixed blade as well, is a RC design as well. Mm. Um, next response that we got was from Tim Allen. Um, I don't know if it's that Tim Allen, but... <laughs> That's uh, not. Uh, is it Tim Allen 321 by any chance? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, he said that he'd like Koenig to, uh, oh, yeah. To, and I think that's a good idea. Those knives are pretty, uh, slick looking. That's a name yeah. I haven't thought of in a little while. Yeah. Indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no arguments. There's just no arguments. There. No, it, it's hard to argue that, but it's just dead air. Um, <laughs> We'll move on to ED sub, EDC Lovers Pakistan saying uh, he wants Giant Mouse to make his design. Which again, um, I've handled a couple of those knives and they're all really nice fit and finish. But the only problem with Giant Mouse is they do limited runs. So you're not going to make much money off of it because they're going to make 400 of them and they're like, no, we're done with that. It's got to come up with a lot of designs. You got to do this. You, know? you, you got to do the CKF thing where you make a knife this big and then you make the same knife, but then you make it this big. <laughs> there you go. Double those sales numbers, man. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Fisk would like to argue that Harsey makes more Chris Reed knives than Chris Reed does nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Cheers to that, sir. Well, Oof, size he large. He still makes more knives than Christopher Reeve does. So Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. You're a bad person. Yeah. I never said I was a good person. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Instead of not a brilliant man, it's not a great man. Not a good man. <laughs> Far from a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Just dropping all pretense. I, I want every that's in chat right now to go over to Nick um, Nick's page and ask him to make the um, I'm a life no a knife lover not a knife fighter shirt um, I think that is a thing that needs to happen mm -hmm. I think he would sell out of those first batch of t-shirts super quick if he decided to make them Yeah, that's what I'm saying because um, I would buy one in a heartbeat Absolutely. And if he doesn't, we might as well just print them off and put the Pokey Factor t-shirts on them and create Pokey Factor t-shirts with that because we gave him a chance. You hear that, Shabazz? That was your one and only warning. <laughs> We're going to steal it. Yeah. yeah. Just, just credit him on the shirt. And just a little diamond in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just use this logo without permission. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the same diamond. It'll just be a funny diamond. <laughs> Give it googly eyes or something. Awful. Awful, awful ideas. Yep. Both of you. You don't have the Z-Hunter skull face in the middle of it. Yes. <laughs> 
yes. I dig it. And on that note, we're going to move on. Yep, that's, um, that's a good call. To well, which it's, not, it's not like it's, we're going after, like, you know, Microtech or anything. That's true. <laughs> it's, just, like, um, it's just Jabaz. He'll just chuckle over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Fisk is asking why we're in the wrong squares tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. We're at, we're at each other's house tonight. Just change things up. Really confuse you. I'm gonna say it's Joe's fault. <laughs> I don't need to Blame explain you. myself. Joe's square <laughs> just goes black. Yeah, just, <laughs> he's out. <laughs> done. Done for the night. Awful. Um, the next question that we asked was, which two companies? Or, or designers, would you like to see do a collaboration? Now, hang on a sec. Before we get too far out of ourselves, none of us answered that qu- the other question. That's a good point. Let's go back. <laughs> so, you know. There's most... Apparently I, think it would be fu- I think it would be funnier to say who everyone else would get their knives to be made for them. Because I know who Joe would get his <laughs> Do you? Because I'm not even sure. <laughs> I just think it's funny that I could say CRKT. Cause <laughs> <laughs> you I know would... it's going to be weird as hell and they're the only one that will be like, yeah, we'll yeah. do it. <laughs> well, no, I yeah. was actually legitimately, go- I was going to answer that for myself, for that question. Specifically <laughs> for that reason. It's like, I have some weird fucking ideas. CRKT is the only one who's going to do it. I'm just going to have to fight tooth and nail to make sure it's made with at least D2. <laughs> just, no. Yeah. And again, I, I feel like, I feel bad because I always slag on them so hard, but I, I really should uh, reiter- reiterate, I don't hate them as a company, and I like a lot of their products. I own a lot of their products. <laughs> it's just disappointing when something's made with 8CR, and it could be made with literally anything else. I, I was disappointed this year that the Thera was on Teflon. <clears throat> yeah. If they had made the Thera on bronze, um, I think that knife would have flown off the shelf. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe. Maybe. That's a it it that's a valid maybe. If, yeah. <laughs> it would have helped its chances for sure. Uh I'd almost Bark River for Nigel. I know we've said that before, but you know, yep. I think it fits. That was going to be my answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the flip side to that would be Condor might be an okay runner up, but um, I think they're a little they're heat they're. I like the way that you design your knives. I'm not sure that I'd like the way Condor would maybe interpret that, if that makes sense. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Um. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 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 There's some things going on in the group chat, is there? Uh, a little, a few things going back and forth. Um, Francis is saying the only right answer is Riot. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One of the very right answers is Riot knives. They for may, sure. They may or like, may not know what they're doing. For the record, <laughs> I was going to say Riot for Dennis, and that's why I was giggling when I looked out. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of front runners for me. Mm-hmm. I just I know that they make good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I'm just saying they can do the best with your design. That's all. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one for me. I'm, I'm I feel think- so alone. I'm I'm thinking, to be honest. I'm uh. Would thinking- be ZT. Would be ZT knives. Yeah, I was thinking. Ball bearings, titanium thinking- handles, high end steels, flipper. <laughs> Either that or wrong. maybe we. I was thinking we because they make everything in purple, and that's my yeah. favorite color. Yeah, their purple is some of the nicest purple titanium that I've seen. 
Like, mm-hmm. uh, it kind of disgusts no, disgusts right. me how nice it is. <laughs> uh, Gray Man Outdoors is also saying that a Spider Co. Benchmade collab would really twist people's minds. Um, and on that same vein, Kershaw Microtech. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? I got a hole in my bench made right here. They've been collabing for years. <laughs> Indeed. Um, Justin's saying he wants a uh, bussy Phil Wilson. No. That, that would be weird. <laughs> that would be really weird. No, no. It was um, he wants Boosie or Phil Wilson to make his fixed blade. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. that, I understand. That makes more yeah. sense. So, <laughs> remember what Kiefer was saying? I was asking about um, teaching him to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> teaching him to read. We need to teach Paul first. Okay, let's... <laughs> because we're like, okay, Phil Wilson, we want to make your knife thick. <laughs> but no, but yes. And that's the, the entire knife. conversation. Like it's, yeah. No, it, it looks like some kind of fucked up nightmare grind where it's super thin towards the handle but then it thickens back out for the tip quick shout out to darren as well he's got to run he's got an early morning com- oh. tomorrow so good night buddy. Good, night, buddy. good night thanks for joining us um and i actually have a couple fixed blades that i have got prototypes for designs and stuff like that and one of them that i gotta throw out there and i mean shout out to dutch bushcraft boys because they discovered them a couple years ago but trc mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if TRC did the grind, the knife that Joe and I know all too well has been sitting on the back burner for too long, uh, that knife would come out as a beast. So they would be a good choice for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can say that. You all know about that knife because Joe will never make it. But anyway. And even if he does, he'll never post it. Hey. Hey. Shade, shade, shade. (laughs) Yeah. And Gray Men Outdoors is saying the Microtech guys would die <laughs> trying to work with Kershaw. Uh-oh. Yeah, probably. Oh, They're just so aneurysed. Especially when they find out halfway through the, the design process that it's going to be made in China. <laughs> That's going to be what? Made in China. It's going from the <laughs> Chinese factory. It's not even the American factory. No, no, it would be made in America, but at the Kershaw factory, not the Microtech factory. Mm, yeah. Yep. What and, else we uh, got? Francis just jumped in for fought, for high end knives. He'd choose Koenig, which I mean, he also answered Riot. So Riot and Koenig, yeah, you're not going to get a bad knife out of that. You yeah. might need to resharpen it, but out, outside of that, oh yeah, uh, little little yeah. shade. Yeah, well, just if there was one thing to complain about from about your Pena, yeah, it would be the the grind or the sharpness out of the box, right? It is not the best factory edge I've ever played with. I'll give it that. Yes. What so, would you compare it to? What's it similar to? Factory edge wise? Yeah. A bench paint. Okay. Okay. That's livable. Yeah, I mean bench paint puts a decent edge on things. This thing's got a decent edge, but it's not anything to really write home about. From being I did some feather sticking. It's a nice working edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a working edge. I did some feather sticking with the Kershaw last night. It was did okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was all right. It wasn't great, but it was okay. I have standards for my M4, though, so you know. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly right. Uh, Grayman Outdoors is saying, "What about a heater Strider collab?" I don't know heater at all. Okay, that's um, vaguely familiar. I sh- I feel like I should know what that is. Do they have bad blood or something? Probably, probably. I, I what do you mean Mick Strider has bl- bad blood with people? I don't know what you're... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean Mick Strider has bad blood? <laughs> <laughs> it's been in the freezer for too long. <laughs> While Joe looks up the, the answer to that, we can get into some of the answers we got from other folk. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and Knives Addiction says that he wants to see a Spider Co. Open L um, <laughs> collab. <laughs> 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 so bizarre. 
Which That's I just gold. Want to see. Oh. That is the best thing I've heard tonight. Oh my goodness. Can you Spidey drop it? Should you, should you Spidey drop hole. it? It's going to have a hole in it. Yeah, but how deeply buried is it into the... Oh no, the hole would be all the way up here. And then you'd have that weird open L cutout in the handle in order to access it. I think it would look a lot like the Valhauten as far as the blade profile with how high the hump was. Yeah. For the hole. <laughs> yeah. No, it would still it would still look like an open L, but you would have the cutout for the hole here, but then you would have the cutout also down here for where the nail nick was for the pull. <laughs> <laughs> Options. <laughs> And yeah. it would almost be like the Cold Steel double agent, which gave you the ring for your index and your pinky finger, the way that it fits in. Like it's. I don't. I don't like it, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. You might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were way slower than I thought you were going to be on that one. <laughs> Mostly out of shock than anything else. <laughs> Apparently Francis likes the idea. He said it would be something, and yep. it would be something. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> sure would be. My God. The thing is, is that you could make one right now. Take an Open L. Take a Delica or an Emerson. Pop the blade out. Push it in. You could do those things. I'm you not saying you should do those things, you but should. you could. Definitely should. Not. Of the world. Do your magic. Go out there. Make a monster. Now I just want to see an open L with an access lock. <laughs> <laughs> so drop shutty. Yeah. Just for how many people it would piss off. Hey, it's in the open sphere now. It's not a it's not a Benchmade Soul property anymore. So Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Justin saying that it would be um, but Joe, it would be in like Rex 121, <laughs> and I'm hoping that he's talking about the open L because that's amazing. Yeah. Well, if it was, it was that thin, then that would be perfect. Right? Yeah, like I've, yeah. No more joking around. I would probably buy it. <laughs> One board. Do it with S125 while you're at it. Like, yeah. <laughs> why not? Do it with the S45 while you're at it too, just because. That thing will take a nice, mean, thin edge. Ridiculous. Let's, uh, have, let's have S60 make a comeback. <laughs> and out Stop. of obscurity comes S60 into an open L spider co. <laughs> Jesus. It's the new hot thing. Oh my. <laughs> I hate it. Um, what other we are getting, again, We're getting close to our break again, actually. So okay. That's... Um, because usually at eight forty-five, isn't it? Yeah, yeah correct. About yeah. Four, forty-five minute chunks. Yeah. Um. So on that note, we'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, for sure. We'll have a break again here. Uh, make sure to stick around. We won't be too long. Then go grab yourself another drink. <laughs> 